Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Medesic, and I'm here to show you how to make a Gmod map with the use of the Source SDK, a Hammer tool, which is the official map editing tool for the Source SDK, and Google SketchUp, a separate CAD program that is very, very easy to learn and very easy to use. And so, basically, when I was going around looking for ways to make a Gmod map, the number one method that popped up was simply using the source SDK by itself, which is, uh, granted, a feasible way of doing it, but not very easy at all. I mean, many people will say it's easy, but learning Hammer Editor is like learning an old CAD program. It's very hard and very difficult to get a grasp on. I mean, a lot of people can like spend hours and hours practicing it and eventually learning it, if they do want to put in the effort, but a lot of people don't, and a lot of people just find it very difficult to get a grasp on something. A lot of people just can't get a grasp on it, and it's very difficult for most people to use. So I'm just going to show you how to use this in conjunction with SketchUp, because it turns out with Valve, Valve has produced a exporter which you can use to export your geometry in here, in SketchUp, to the Hammer uh, Map Editor, in which turn you can use to run a map in a Source SDK game, such as Half-Life, um, Counter-Strike, and in this case, Gmod. So, I'll go ahead and first teach you how to install everything so that you can get ready, and of course, you can skip ahead at any time. I'll hopefully put, like, marks or something on the video so that if you've already achieved a step, you can just skip forward. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to install all the tools that you'll need to make Gmod maps. Now, um, First thing that you're obviously going to need to download is this, the Source SDK, which is important because it has the Hammer Editor in it. So you're going to want to go to Steam. You do need to have a Steam account, by the way, and Steam installed. So uh, go to your library, which is your list of games, right here, and then go to All Games, and then Tools. Now it'll open up this window right here, which is uh, all the SDKs and dedicated server softwares that you can download for separate games. Scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see Source SDK, right click on that and then hit install. And that will download and install Source SDK for you. And that might take a while because Source SDK is quite big, I think it's about a gigabyte. And so after that, while Source SDK is installing, you can go ahead and find Google SketchUp and then install that. Go ahead and go to google.com. You can just type it into Google, Google SketchUp. and then the second link down and then just SketchUp, not SketchUp Pro, just SketchUp and then the Windows version, of course if you have Mac you probably shouldn't be watching this video and then just agree to download and all that stuff and then just download the installer and then install it and then of course after installing SketchUp and the Source SDK you'll need the exporter which gets the SketchUp files to this, the Source SDK and the exporter is a bit tricky because in the article that I've read here, SketchUp Source Tools, they state that it is in the, the Source SDK. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the same case with you, but if you actually navigate to that location that they've stated it's in, which is um, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, your username, Source SDK, yeah, right here, you'll see the SketchUp folder, but if you double click in there, nothing. And it says right below here, some users may need to delete and reinstall the Source SDK in order to see the new plugins. I've tried that multiple times, still nothing has showed up here. Nothing's worked. And, of course, this may not be the same case for everybody, and it may simply be because this article's out of date. But, however, someone else, I've read somewhere else that someone stated that uh, there is a separate SDK which does have the exporter, and you need, it's uh, the Alien Swarm SDK, towards the top of the tools list. and right click on that and download it. It's a bit faster than the Source SDK because it's 250 megabytes, quite a bit smaller. And then when you finish downloading it, it should be... Uh, okay, you're gonna have to bear with me if you don't know how to navigate folders as well as I do. So my computer, C drive, program files x86, or just program files if you have a 32-bit computer, and then Steam, Steam Apps, Common, not your username, Common, Alien Swarm, 
SDK Tools, Plugins, SketchUp, there it is. Those, that, that is the plugin right there that you need. So now, to get the exporter installed, you need to go to Computer, C Drive, again, bear with me, Program Files, x86, if you have a 64-bit computer, and then look for Google, Google SketchUp 8, Plugins, and then just take everything out of here and insert it into here. And then that is your plugin now installed. So now your Google SketchUp 8 will be able to export uh, the, VD, the VMF files that you need to import into Hammer. Okay, so now that you have all the tools installed, I'm going to go ahead and get started on showing you SketchUp. Now, uh, if you have an idea of how to use SketchUp already, go ahead and skip forward in the video. Hopefully, I have it marked somewhere to how far forward you can skip. Uh, but for now, this is a, I'm going to start out with SketchUp. For those who don't know how to use it, I'm going to have a I'm going to provide a basic tutorial. And so, when you first start up SketchUp, this is what you should see. You'll probably see a bunch of other pop-ups like 3D Warehouse and all that stuff. X out of all that, uncheck, show again, or whatever. And then you should come to this. Now, click the selection tool click on the lady and uh, hit the delete key on your keyboard because you're not going to need it right now. Instead, what you'll need to know is that these tools at the top here are the ones that you're going to be most familiar with. You won't see this on the side. This is added in later. But um, the select tool is very important. The pencil tool or the line tool is the next most important. You're going to be using the rectangle tool quite a bit as well. And then the push-pull way over here past these tools is very critically important. This is going to be used quite a bit to make 3D shapes. It's, it was part of what makes SketchUp so easy to use. And then the Erase tool right here, you're going to be using that quite a bit as well. Now for moving the camera around in SketchUp, you're going to be using the Orbit tool quite a bit, which is um, used by either clicking the Orbit tool right here, and then moving it that way with your left clicker, or if you have a middle mouse clicker, you don't even have to activate the tool, you can be using another tool like the Line tool here, and then just click on your mouse clicker, the middle mouse clicker, and then click and drag and it'll use the orbit tool just like that. And then there's also the pan tool which comes in handy quite a bit. You can click on that, again you can click on that separately or there's another shortcut. You can hold down shift and then hold down your middle clicker and you pan. And that's basic camera navigation. You'll be using all those functions quite a bit to get around your shape. Just play around with it a little bit, get used to it because if you're going to be modeling in SketchUp quite a bit, it comes in handy to have all these tools. We'll go ahead and get started with our basic shape. Go ahead and click the line tool right here, the pencil. And then right here, click in the middle of those lines called the origin. Click that once and then move along the red line here, the red axis. And you want to type in an exact value for your line to be as long as a certain value. So start typing in one, zero, and then apostrophe for the feet symbol. You'll see in the bottom right corner here length and then it'll show the value that you're typing in so go ahead and type one zero apostrophe and then hit enter and then the resulting line will be the exact length that you have typed in ten feet long and as you go on you'll see it's very important to be using exact values because otherwise uh, shapes will end up slightly off or you may end up with not exact squares etc and it just becomes increasingly difficult to work with your shapes and you'll end up with leaks and your map will just look tacky and terrible so it's very important to use exact values, and it's very important that you get into a habit of typing in the values each time you want to draw a line. And so for the green axis, you can so go along the green axis now to draw your next line. We're making a square. So along the green axis, and then don't click, type in 2, 0. We're going to make it 20 feet, and then apostrophe. Hit enter. That's a 20-foot line right there. Then along the red axis, make it 10 foot. And then you don't even have to type in a value for this, just click on the endpoint, and then you have a complete square. Or not a square, rather, a rectangle. And now we're going to use the push-pull to make it a 3D object, because you can't use these flat faces to export to Hammer. It doesn't work that way. What you have to do is make a 3D shape, so use the push-pull right here. And then click and drag downwards to push it into a 3D shape. And go ahead and type one apostrophe to make it one foot deep. And so now that's our basic rectangular prism. 
But the way the exporter works for Hammer is that it only it requires all of your geometry to be in grouped shapes. So we have a basic shape like this, which is perfect for grouping. You need to click and drag with the selection tool uh, to select the whole thing. Right click and make group. Make sure the entire thing is selected. You want to group all the geometry. And so once all of that is grouped, then you have a basic floor for your map. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to make more objects quite quickly. Of course, if you want, you can draw out each object as you go, although it takes a while. But we'll draw out the next one, a wall, for our, for our uh, floor going this way. And so you want to draw a line along the green axis, along the edge of your shape right there. And then draw a line up. And you don't have to click again to draw another line. You can just click and then it'll just, and then drag along. And then as long as it drags along and you see a line, then that's another line being made and, and ready. So just type in an exact value of 10, and then along the green axis, type in an exact value of 20, 10, and then you have another complete uh, rectangle. And then push that into a one foot deep rectangular prism. Highlight the whole thing. Now that's why you want to make this a group right now, right before you make a shape, is that uh, if you leave this ungrouped before you make this next shape, then it becomes really difficult to group this. For example, I'll explode this real quick and show you what I'm talking about. By the way, if you want to ungroup something, right-click on it and then explode it right here. And then that makes it ungrouped again. And then if you look here, if you try and select the whole thing to group it, you can see that I've accidentally set selected some of the other geometry that's part of this shape. And then if you try and group that, make group, uh, that is going to export, that's not going to export into Hammer. That's going to produce an error. You only want to, um, see, I can, I'll, remember you can control Z to undo anything that you've done. And so I'll undo the uh, change that, the exploding that I did of that. So now that's grouped again, and this is still ungrouped, so I'll go ahead and group this. Now, because this is grouped, it won't let me select individual geometry and faces and lines on it. So I can select this with no problem. Right click, make group, and I've got another wall. Or a, just a wall, rather. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to just uh, copy whole shapes that you've already grouped into other shapes that are grouped. And then that, that way you can easily produce bunches and bunches of walls and floors and whatever. So you want to click the move tool up here, right next to the push bowl and then you want to hold down control that's going to produce a plus sign on your cursor if you look carefully and then click and drag and then it'll produce an exact duplicate of the shape that you were clicking and dragging on move it along the red axis and again you're going to want to type an exact value and um, well because we want it to be uh, out like that type in 11 feet because 10 feet you'll just end up like that So now you have a uh, close to an enclosed space. Another thing is that when you're testing your map in Hammer, the map has to be completely enclosed. It can't be there can't be any open spots. Otherwise, uh, it, the map will run, but there will be glitchiness and some components of the game may not work. And then I'll go ahead and uh, demonstrate the rotate tool. So what you're going to want to do is, I'm going to teach you two new things here. So just pay attention. So go ahead and copy this, like we did with the uh, other one. And then you can release control at any point after you copied the object, and it will still remain copied. And then you don't have to type an exact value, just have it out like that. And then you see these red crosses that appear on the side? If you hover over them, a little protractor will appear in the middle of your object there. And if you click and drag, you can rotate it around like that. And we're going to go ahead and rotate it like that so we can make this a ceiling. Now, as you can see, it's a bit off because we didn't bother to use exact values at that point. So go ahead and click this. Don't click and drag. Just click where it says endpoint and group on the corner of your object there. And then zoom out a little bit. By the way, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, if I didn't tell you that before. And then hover over the corner of this object right here where it says endpoint and group make sure that you click exactly on that 
and then bam! Because you've used exact values on all of these objects, this has sealed up properly with this one, and on the other side has sealed up properly with this one. And so now you have close to an enclosed space, and we're going to complete that by using the rectangle tool. So go ahead and click the rectangle tool up here by the line tool, and then click that down here on the on that side in that corner to make a complete rectangle and then use the push-pull to drag out a shape and then because all these are grouped you can just simply highlight this like that right click make group and then that one's a group shape as well and then you can also just duplicate it like that also if you're dragging along that way on the outside of the shape or in front of a shape rather it will do that it will simply put the shape on the face of the shape that you're dragging outside of but simply move all the way up to the left where there are no shapes and it will eventually move it along the green axis if you have it hovered close to that and then make that 21 feet because you want it to be poking outside like that alright so now you have a sealed complete box that you've made in SketchUp and so now what you want to do from here hit plugins at the top provided that you've installed it correctly you should see plugins and then export SMD and export VMF you want to click export VMF and then name it test one and then you have exported your first GMOD map from SketchUp